Hey Alpha Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today I just wanted to go over what could happen next in crypto. And of course, this isn't financial advice. You know, I'm not a fortune teller. Uh, the past doesn't dictate the future. However, we are going to examine some of the past in order to try to understand what could happen in crypto next, right? And so to do that, I want to just uh, take a look at some of the comments that uh, Ethereum founder Buterin was saying recently. Uh, he said he welcomes another crypto winter. Of course, I've taken a look at the possibility of a crypto winter in the past. And if you want to check out some of the, the older videos that I posted and see what I'm talking about, uh, go ahead and do so. Uh, however, for today, let's just go ahead and take a look at the charts. Uh, one of the charts that I really love is this index chart on TradingView. It actually does give a very long history of Bitcoin all the way back to 2011. And the reason we, we like to look at uh, the Bitcoin chart, it's not because uh, I love Bitcoin or anything like that. It's because, of course, the market follows Bitcoin. And if you have your favorite altcoins, well, the other coin that you're going to want to be uh, learning and understanding how it moves, of course, is Bitcoin and then maybe Ethereum. If you have those understandings, you should be able to trade the market much better than in isolation because sometimes an altcoin might be doing really well and then Bitcoin has a hiccup. It, has a, it catches a cold, it gets the flu, and then you're wondering what's going on. You know, is my altcoin defective? No, it's just that all of these uh, billionaires with their bots and all their professional traders, they're actually uh, following a lot of what Bitcoin's doing. They just used it, use it as kind of the uh, canary in the coal mine for the rest of the market. So that's why we take a look at Bitcoin, right? And uh, here we can see that Bitcoin had a, a, a series of blow off tops and then uh, what's called crypto winters. These crypto winters are just uh, basically extended uh, kind of bear markets, kind of recessions in the uh, price of Bitcoin, where, you know, here it was approximately two years. Here it was approximately, mm, you know, like three, four years. And then also we have another one, right, which was approximately, you know, three years. And so these cycles of bear markets uh, continue for quite a long time. Uh, when we get into this uh, so-called crypto winter, a lot of these coins will die off, right? That's why they call it the winter, right? Because different coins will die off. And if you're holding uh, really uh, <laughs> bad coins, then they might not survive the crypto winter. The projects may just shudder. The development teams may just move on to other projects and the investors who were funding them may just, uh, you know, uh, write off their losses and go look for uh, something else that's more promising to invest in for the next bull market. And you can see that uh, on these charts, the, uh, the uh, EMA is, I, I have the EMA is up, right, on the weekly chart. And what we're seeing here is that price action likes to get back down to this 200 EMA, maybe even this 300 moving average. And so if we are going to like uh, project where the price action might go, then that would be a logical place to look. Maybe around the 200 uh, EMA or even the 300 moving average. And the 300 moving average right now is around $16,000, and the uh, 200 EMA is approximately $27,000, right? So that's quite a ways to fall, considering that we're at $38,000 right now. Uh, we did have kind of a scary drop this morning, but we are uh, recovering. We almost entered the $37,000 territory, but we are recovering. We're about $38,300. But... Let's go ahead and take fractals of these past winters, and you can see just how dramatic they are, right? They're very low, very high blow-off tops. Uh, I'm not going to focus so much on the magnitude of them, so much as the shape of them. And I want to compare the shape of the past with the shape of the current situation on Bitcoin. And so let me just go ahead and color code this for you. Let me get rid of these... EMAs, and let's go ahead and put price action into uh, just a line chart, right? Just a line chart. Now I'm going to take fractals from the past, and let's start with uh, this uh, blue one, 2018. So in 2018, 
what I'm trying to do here is match the intensity of the peaks, kind of the shape, the shape of the peaks, and then also the shape of the decline. I can't, I can't match the intensity actually, and the durations can vary. So I'm stretching out these fractals. These fractals are not exactly how it played out on the timeline, and they're not exactly how it played out in price action. What I'm showing you is only the momentum, the movement, the kind of uh, choreographed uh, dance that uh, Bitcoin and crypto price action went through during this period. So don't focus too much on the specifics, just get a feel for the flow of price, right? That's what we want to understand, the flow of price. And here you can see in 2018, we had a blow off top, and then we had kind of this relief rally. Uh, we didn't get a relief rally this time, we just got, got kind of a midsummer bounce. And then we had like another attempt on it, and then uh, in case of 2018, we just started to plummet. Right, we just started to plummet. We uh, eventually made a plateau and just fell to hell. Right. Well, currently we're, we uh, made another attempt, and then we made like another noble attempt, which actually exceeded the rounded top that we had in the summer. In the winter, we we exceeded it, but of course we fell down. And look, we're falling right back down into that plateau area. And so, if we look at 2018. What it might suggest is that we're actually, you know, we're actually falling back into this type of a pattern where there's a very good likelihood that we could fall lower, right? And then how long would it take if we're just matching the price action here? How long could it take for us to recover? It could take all the way, it could take three years. It could take three years to recover this price action before we go into that parabolic movement. OK, just if we're matching the choreography from 2018 and superimposing it on 2022. Well, let's take a look at another year. Let's take a look at 2014. 2014 was a little bit more difficult to match because it was a bit earlier. The blow off tops were quite dramatic and the decline is also equally dramatic. But if we compare it to uh, 2018, you can see the choreography is very similar, right? Let's turn off a current price action. Just look at these two. The choreography is very similar. You have the blow off top after a massive run up. You have this type of a relief rally, and then you have a noble attempt. But eventually you come down to this plateau area, and then you fall to hell. In this case, 2018 recovered uh, much quicker than 2014. And 2014, the suffering extended for quite a while, and then you got this amazing rally, right? You got the amazing rally a little bit earlier in 2018, but ultimately they both came back down to approximately the same level, just showing that they are still making the same type of dance. And again, sometimes one moved up while the other moved down, or vice versa, but ultimately they followed the same type of course and to, until they started to reach that next uh, that next um, parabolic movement for the next bull run, right? And look, I, I'm just I'm just taking it until we basically match the height, just basically match the height of the parabolic run. So if you had bought at the top here, then how long did it take you to break even, basically? Well, it took you, you know, wow. So it took. Well, it took uh, 1,000, almost 1,500 days, okay? And in 2018, you were lucky. You could get out early if you wanted to, uh, but uh, you still didn't make your money back, right? So let's take a look at uh, not 2018, not 2014, but let's take a look at 2011. So in 2011, and compare it to our current price action, 2011 was even more dramatic, right? We had this huge blow off top and then a huge uh, just crash we didn't even reach the plateau points of the other of the other years right the other years they were able to stabilize people held on to their bitcoin for much longer they held on to their crypto they belief had come into the system but in 2011 if we try to match the peak intensity and you know we can see that uh it just it just declined quite a bit quite a bit right and so 
this was uh, explosive and then it was also super destructive but ultimately it did come back to the same type of dance in the recovery and this is what i'm matching up primarily for 2011 because this is when the faith came back into the market and then we had a run up and of course we went into that parabolic action that took us into the next uh, bull market right so okay we have an understanding of that is there any way to see this a little bit more clearly uh, I made some trend lines here, and you can see for all of them, for all of these, uh, all of these epochs of Bitcoin, we do have this type of a downward trend, and then it bounces off this uptrend because Bitcoin's price overall increases. But whenever you have these blow-off tops, these uh, high points in your cycle, you do have this type of a decline, even though it's chaotic on the way down super chaotic at times you do come back to this trend line and then you hit your support and you bounce off with this unfortunately uh, smaller angle right it, we wish it was just a v-shaped recovery and you just got all of your money back but it took much longer to recover than it did to fall down and so you can see uh, with our current price action uh, let me get rid of uh, some of these You can see with our current price action, we're, we didn't have those super profitable blow off tops where you could have gotten out here at a much better price. This is why people were predicting like $120,000, you know, $100,000 Bitcoin, you know, at least $75,000 Bitcoin. But we never made it because we never had a blow off top this cycle. We had rounded tops. However, we did have a double peak which most of the other uh, most of the other bull markets they didn't have that double peak. In fact, only 2014 had something like one something like one, but most of them did not and so they didn't get that extra chance to profit. Uh, we did. We got that extra chance to profit uh, this uh, last year and Unfortunately, if you didn't take your profits out there, then you locked out, right? You're locked in. And now we're on this downtrend, which has been common to everything. Let's just pretend this was a blow off top. You would see we would still be forming that downtrend. And it's just funny, like how almost perfectly our price action uh, tested it, moved up above it, came down, tested it again. And it looks like we're just going to roll on down, right? Now, this could be a dramatic fall or it could be a soft roll like uh, in 2014 or it could be something totally different like in uh, 2018 where we hit a plateau people start thinking oh okay bitcoin found its bottom and then suddenly the bottom of the market is kicked from out from under your feet right and you have nowhere to stand and we're just in free fall that would be quite dramatic, right? That could be quite traumatizing for a lot of people still holding on to their coins. What could kick that off? I don't know. Could it be the double interest rates from the Fed? Could it be war with Russia? Could it be, you know, some type of recession on a, you know, a global recession or some type of hit to the, you know, stock market in the tech sector? Again, Bitcoin is trading more along with stocks. So if there is a tech uh, sector reset, if there is a stock market crash, uh, Bitcoin could be highly vulnerable to that as being part of the tech sector. Um, and, you know, we could see this type of pattern play out again. There's lots of reasons to think that this type of a pattern could play out again. And you want to be on your guard for it. You want to be on your guard for it because it's highly possible. And so, you know, what, what can we take a look at next, right? Uh, where would be a good time to buy then? If you're, if I'm recommending, uh, you know, to myself, if I'm talking to myself and saying, look, I, I should be getting out and profit in this area, right? This is where I should be selling. If I want to take profit, this is where I should be selling, right? And you should have bought down here, but if uh, you bought down here, you're, you're lucky, you know, $30,000, uh, you, you probably can still get out with a little bit of profit. But where should I be buying? Well, in that case, I've marked out a triangle right about here. And again, let's put up all of our fractals up there. And you can see, they 
all come down to this point. They all come down to this point. In fact, it looks like they all converge right here. Right? They, they all converge right here, and they also all converge right here. And then a third point would be over here, except uh, in 2018, you didn't get that chance. The market already took off without you. So uh, if we just extrapolated this information, and again, uh, don't get into too much of the details. This isn't the uh, price ratios. It's not the magnitude of it. It's just the choreography of it, okay? The general flow of it uh, that I'm comparing with the previous years. So uh, if this teal one is our current price action, then what we're really looking forward to is, you know, somewhere, somewhere maybe in June, potentially October, and then maybe a last chance in January next year to buy. And this is going to be a huge period of time. If we do, if we do have that crypto winter that uh, Buterin was talking about, right? If we do have the crypto winter and we follow this downward path, then these are going to be the opportunities to buy. And you're first going to be looking around here. If you don't see us coming down to this trend line, then you're going to be looking around in October, and then your last chance around uh, that January time. Just if we're using the past, if we're using the past as a model for the future. And again, the past doesn't dictate the future; it just helps inform it, right? So right now, a lot of you may be feeling this type of a pinch, where you may have you may be thinking to yourself, you know. Maybe I missed my chance to sell. Maybe I missed my chance to sell and profit. But can you break even? Can you break even at least? If you can, then it might be worth considering your options because we can go lower. And we've had multiple cycles that have proven that we can go lower, significantly lower. What would be, uh, a, what would be the drop on this one? The drop would be another 50%, okay? So potentially, Bitcoin could lose 50% of its value, right? Go down to $20,000 maybe. Now, we have these kind of rolling, soft, gentle, wave-like patterns. Is that going to continue? Have the billionaires taken over the market and we're just going to kind of roll our way? Maybe, maybe, but that would suggest that you would have other chances to buy back in as well, right? So you're going to have to understand uh, your risk. Maybe you think, well, it w it's better to, you know, just assume there might be a, assume there might be another wave formation here, and maybe I can sell here instead of getting out here if I'm terrified of us reaching this. Yeah, I mean, that's the risk. It's just that it hasn't happened before. It hasn't happened before, right? The one time that it did happen was right here in 2018 where we started to get that type of a roll, which is why I can even suggest this. Because what if we do, what if we do just bounce off this plateau and make another one of these type of another one of these type of peaks, right? Sort of like we made one right here. And in 2014 we made one right there. But can you count on this ghost peak, which has never existed before? Can you count on it existing? Mm, maybe not. So you might want to de-risk some of your more risky assets. That's all I'm saying, right? And that's the question that I'm asking myself. Uh, it's a question that you may have to ask yourself. I'm not giving any advice on it because I don't know what's going to happen. I just can look at what the writing is on the wall. We have... Uh, Buterin talking about crypto winters, and he's the founder of Ethereum, right? We have, uh, you know, lots of people in the stock market saying there might be a market crash that's bigger than what anyone thinks. We have people uh, talking about war. We have people talking about, you know, all of these different issues in the world. And I'm just thinking, maybe this pattern is going to continue, right? Maybe this pattern is going to continue, and that it might be good to de-risk until we see a little bit more of uh, solidity in the market. 
And yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what else to say about that except that um, this point, this 20,000, maybe even if it's more gentle, let's, let's say that we bottom out here, right? So let's say that as opposed to the past, you know, we do something like this, where maybe we get kind of a roll like this. You know, something, just something like that. Well, we're still talking about getting into this, um, you know, 30K area, maybe 25K. And then, of course, we're still talking about the 20K being on the table. And this is consistent with the history of Bitcoin. It's consistent with the history of the EMAs. If we look at our EMAs, you can see this uh, 300 that we touched would be right here at the bottom. That would be very supportive. And then also we have this uh, 200 EMA. It's the 300 MA. This is the 200 EMA. And the 200 EMA would be approximately around that uh, 25, $27,000 area. And this one would be approximately, you know, 16 to $17,000 if we came up to this trend line. Just to put that more into context, let's take a look at this trend line. You can see how this is just kind of running through here, right? Running through here. Of course, I'm using this touch, this touch, and then the projections to make a third touch. But we also see uh, in the past that this trend line doesn't necessarily have to be respected, right? This trend line could go lower. And, you know, it's just... It's pretty hard to uh, get this parabolic shape to have one trend line, right? You can't really draw a trend line like this. That just just doesn't make any sense. And plus, if you spend time above a trend line, you tend to also spend an equal amount of time under the trend line. That's why it's a trend line, right? Because it's, it's kind of an average of your movement. And so that would suggest also a deeper pullback if we if we do a trend line like this. So in some ways, um, using this other trend line here is a bit generous. It's a bit generous. But it does align with our fractals pretty well. And one of the questions that we might have is whether or not we could increase as fast as we did with these previous fractals. Maybe we can't. Maybe we can't. And so if that's the case, then we might not go as low as you think, but we also might not come up as fast as you think either. All right. So it's not just, you know, it's a double-edged sword, right? It's not just that you might not fall as far, but you also might not grow as fast. And so what we could see is something a little bit more moderate like this. And then it just takes a lot longer, right? Maybe 2025, right? 2026. You don't really know. These cycles could be lengthening. A lot of people talk about lengthening cycles, right? But let's use this, uh, let's use these white trend lines right here in order to just uh, make our basis since we're already kind of uh, composing a theory around them. And if we do use these trend lines, then what we could see is that, uh, first of all, let's take off these, uh, these fractals. Let's take off this EMA. Just leave the price action there. And let's say uh, you did buy at the top. Where, where could you potentially see yourself breaking even, right? Where could you see yourself breaking even? So that's going to be approximately here, which let's take our current date. That's going to be in almost two and a half to three years, two and a half to three years, right? In order to get to that price so that you could break even if you bought at the top, if you bought at the very top of the market. It's going to take you maybe, 
So using this hypothesis, it's going to take you maybe three years to get your money back. If we don't get one of those uh, 2018 you know, rallies, which hopefully we do, hopefully we do, but in that case, it would still take a year, 370 days, right? So it would take a year to get to that point. And so if you're in the market, you have to be ready to hodl. That's, that's my point. If you're in the market, you have to be psychologically prepared that you may need to hodl for one, two, up to three years if you've decided to keep a hold of these positions. And that's why a lot of people are going to sell, right? Because they'd rather use that money for other investments, to buy a house, to, you know, buy a new car. Do They would like to use their money in other more productive ways than just holding onto it during a dip, right? They may have other investments. They might want to start a business, that kind of thing. So people are going to get out of the market if we continue in this direction, which historically we have and which it appears that we are doing. This was such a fake out, right? Not having this blow off top was such a fake out. It confused the whole market. The the market kept looking for that blow off top. They thought they were, they were going to get to 100,000, which would be consistent with past blow off tops, and we just never got to 100,000. We're not doing the blow off tops this this year, guys. We're not doing it. The blow off top is canceled, all right? This cycle isn't going to have that blow off top. We are going to either have a nice gentle you know, rolling cyclical, you know, couple of years, or we're going to have a crash along with the rest of the market, and then it's going to take a couple of years to recover. Like those are our, basically our two options. What could cause a blow off top to just spontaneously happen while the rest of the market is imploding, right? The stock market and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know. There is a case to be made that we do have this type of, you know, macro, you know, trend that that could take us somewhere, but uh, like for example, if we bounced here, just say we bounced, right? This would be our bounce zone. If we bounced here. And instead of plateauing and falling, if we did bounce here, then potentially you could see something like this, right? And then that takes us to the 100,000. But what's going to prompt that? What's going to prompt that? Are rising interest rates going to prompt that? No. Rising interest rates uh, are what actually is prompting us to decline. So... It's going to take something extraordinary. It's going to take something extraordinary to overcome the his, the history of crypto. It's going to take something extraordinary to overcome the stock market decline. It's going to take something extraordinary to overcome the supply chain issues that are happening in the world. It's going to take a lot to overcome that. And so it will have to be something extraordinary. And that's the risk that you're taking if you choose to hold that you may have to hold for one, two, or even three years in order to try to, uh, in order to hold your positions for this potential payoff, right? And it's not even that great of a, of a payoff. It's not even that great of a payoff, to be honest. I mean, unless we were to blow through it, which would have to happen right at the time of this historical declines and the rest of the market in the world collapsing, right? I mean, unless stocks suddenly change their mind, right? Which is unlikely. I mean, the U.S. would have to totally reverse its policies and we would have to say that inflation doesn't matter, you know, to them anymore. And clearly it does matter. So more likely, we could see a bounce like this from some extraordinary action, and then maybe we do this again, and then maybe break down, right? Come back up, something like that. You could you could be risking this, but uh, that's for you to for you to decide, right? So 
we all have to make these decisions on our own. Ultimately, we're all responsible for our own choices. And sometimes crypto is a little bit like a casino, right? There aren't the same type of uh, profit and loss statements on these coins and tokens that there are on businesses in the stock market. And even the stock market is a bit casino-like. So yeah, a lot of the coins that you get into, if we do have this uh, crypto winter that Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, is talking about, a lot of those coins will die during the crypto winter, and you won't even be able to break even, right? That's why a lot of people are recommending holding just those, you know, AAA graded, you know, blue chip coins, right? Things like Bitcoin and Ethereum that are known to withstand the crypto winter if you are going to choose to hodl. So psychologically, be prepared for one, two, maybe three years. Get into blue chips. And if you are holding something that's not, you know, that's not a blue chip, then be ready to understand that it may disappear. It may just go away. The projects just may not exist in another year. And I know that can be a little bit depressing to a lot of people who were talked up, you know, into a lot of these coins by uh, different YouTubers and influencers, which isn't the type of person that I want to be. Uh, you know, the reason I'm on here is just to share my knowledge and to help myself learn by repeating some of these concepts, and then also to get feedback from people. Uh, again, if you want to join the uh, Discord and just have a chat, the crypto winter can often be a time to just learn. Learn, develop strategies, and then also to buy the bottom of the market. And if you leave the market completely and you don't continue to learn, then you're going to miss that buying opportunity which doesn't come around that often, right? We've not had that many chances to buy that low. And if you buy that bottom, you're going to be just sitting pretty for the next three years, right? You're going to be sitting pretty for the rest of crypto history, right? As this market just goes up from there. At the bottom of these crypto winters has always, has always been the time to buy because if you bought there, it never goes lower again. It never goes lower again. Of course, the majority of the market always buys at the peak. That's when your grandma and your cousins and, you know, everyone at the office is talking about crypto. Oh, did you see how it's doing? Oh, you guys got to buy Doge. You got to buy Sheep. You got to buy everything, you know. Of course, the market's going to collapse after that. And then when everyone's gone, that's the time that you want to be in the market and to grab those great prices, right? Again, not financial advice. These are considerations that I'm making. If you'd like to consider that these things with us, then go ahead and uh, join the Discord. At, uh, there's a link at alphacommission.com, or you can just uh, use the link in the description of this video. And please hit the subscribe button. Uh, that'll help me a lot. It's really hard to get viewers these days um, during a bear market. And hopefully, you know, we can stick around in order to give lots of people advice and maybe grow and uh, learn together. Okay. You guys have a good day. Uh, stay safe. Uh, that was your alpha for the day. And uh, happy trading.